Welcome to the Farm and Home Show. This is Kristen Hildebrand, the Horticulture Extension Agent here in Warren County. And joining us today is Dr. Nicole Goche. She's our Extension Plant Pathologist with the University of Kentucky. We're really glad to have you on the show to explain a little bit more about this new strawberry disease that's out. So there's a new strawberry disease um, that um, showed up in Kentucky last August, August 2024, and um, it's one that had been around. Uh, we It was first discovered in Florida in the 2017-2018 winter growing season, and it made its way to Kentucky last year, so it's wrecking havoc on our commercial strawberry production here in the state. The disease's name is Neopestilociopsis disease. Neopest is, um, is a fungal disease, and it came in this year through uh, plugs. So our commercial growers plant plugs, or which is small plants, in um, September, and they grow them through the winter and covered, and then they uncover in the spring. So when Neopest showed up, it was really in those commercial fields. Whether home strawberry growers have seen Neopest, whether it's in home gardens, we don't know that yet, but I really suspect that a lot of home gardens are going to end up with some of these disease plants this year. So the commercial growers have very different management regimens than a home strawberry grower. Today we're going to talk about what a gardener should do if they find Neopest. So on leaves, it's spots. So small spots that end up coalescing or if the spots are on the edges of the leaf, they can expand to make a V-shaped lesion, not different from a lot of the strawberry leaf diseases that we see. Uh, fruit can become infected um, and that would be when the season warms up. So depending on whether you have a perennial strawberry uh, production or, or annual, like over the winter. Um, but fruit can become infected and those symptoms as a, a kind of a sunken lesion that gets tan in the center. And then the whole strawberry ends up becoming mummified. And then in both leaves and in fruit, little black pycnidia or fruiting structures. So they look like black pepper flakes in the center. And then um, if leaves are infected early, the disease can work its way down into the crown and into the roots, and that is a quick death for plants. So again, um, Phomopsis, leaf, our leaf, three leaf spot diseases, anthracnose crown rot, anthracnose fruit rot, those are all common strawberry diseases, and this neopest disease looks very similar to all of them, which makes it super challenging. Is there anything specific that we need to know about as the consumer, especially with this disease being a lot more prevalent with us here in the state of Kentucky? So if the disease does arrive in a home garden, there's nothing, there's nothing labeled for homeowners to spray or to manage it. So they need to be removed, don't compost, and um, just avoid strawberry in that particular bed or that particular part of the garden for two to three years. Um, as for it affecting commercial growers, I think that's going to trickle down to consumers. Um, so we might not have our, as many or any you pick strawberry production this year. Uh, prices will be higher. We might not have our local strawberries this year. So we've been hit really hard. And unfortunately, our commercial growers are going to really feel the pain for this. And our consumers, I think, are going to see it. Is the weather pattern going to make it, I know we can't predict what the weather is going to give us, but with it, the rain and things like that, do you think it could get worse as we see some of that spring weather? Absolutely. So warm, wet conditions are what all of our fungal pathogens like, including this one. So I think once April comes around and it starts getting warmer, and that's really our time where our strawberries have bloomed, there, we have small fruit, and I think that's where we're going to start seeing it. So right now the pathogen's not active. It's cold just like we are. Um, but, no, but as spring comes around, as that pathogen, as that fungus breaks dormancy, um, it's going to become really active. Just again, in those moderately warm temperatures of the spring, that we love so much that uh, that fungus is going to love it too. What other resources uh, do, do you all have available through the plant pathology department if anybody does have further questions about this new disease? Okay, so we have just published a new fact sheet, and uh, that's on our Department of Plant Pathology's webpage. So the University of Kentucky Department of Plant Pathology, just to do a search there, or we're going to have the, uh, the link available here. And also we have done two webinars, um, and those are both posted on YouTube. So we're going to provide those links as well. So if anybody wants to watch it and see images, see what it's like, and um, if any commercial growers are watching, those links um, will also include um, fungicides. 
for commercial growers. Thank you guys for watching the Farm and Home Show, and we hope to see you again next time.